Okay, I'll start then. Um, we, let's see. I have a lot of people here. That's great. Um, all right. Yeah, thank you so much for um, you know, everybody to uh, everybody for coming to my passion pitch. Um, I see a lot of people in the room, which is great because, um, I mean, I'll be happy even if there's like just five people in the room because um, that's just like five people I can share my experience with and uh, raise awareness about polar bears. Uh, this is actually my second passion pitch at Screen Classify, and the first one was done like three years ago on a very similar uh, topic. Uh, some of you may know I've been traveling once a year for eco-volunteerism in different uh, countries for wildlife uh, and uh, environmental conservation for three years. Um, I'm a big animal lover. I used to work in animal welfare for eight years. I oh. also deeply care about our planet, and I like to raise awareness you know, you know, whenever I have the opportunity to create a more sustainable future for our younger generation, basically. Uh, this year, I picked Churchill, Manitoba in Canada for polar bear conservations, and I volunteered at uh, Churchill Northern Study Center. Uh, there's a, a lot of information I want to share with you, so please bear with me. I will try to keep my pitch um, under around like 10 minutes, but I will leave five minutes at the end for Q&A if anybody has questions. So Churchill is probably one of the most beautiful places I've been. Churchill is this remote town located in the northeast of the Manitoba province of Canada along Hudson Bay. To give you an idea of the location, this is Google Maps. So here, um, this is New York where I live. Uh, this is Chicago, right? And uh, polar bear, uh, sorry, uh, Churchill is right here. So this zone around Churchill in this latitude is also called the subarctic zone uh, because as you can see, it's actually right below the uh, Arctic Circle. Uh, the Arctic Circle is uh, somewhere around here and within the circle is obvious, obviously uh, the Arctic. Churchill is known as polar bear capital of the world and for its abundance of wildlife and nature. It's also home to thousands of beluga whales, other Arctic species, and spectacular views of the Northern Lights. You probably see the photos I post on Slack when I was there. Um, I had an amazing time there and I felt really lucky that I was able to uh, witness the, be be uh, the beauty of this uh, unique place. Churchill's economy is mainly driven by tourism. Uh, it currently has a population of A70, with 50% being indigenous. Uh, the oh. only way to get to Churchill is by air or train. So there is no road leading to the town, which makes it rel relatively expensive to live and isolated. Ralph, well, what's that? Sorry? <laughs> oh, I think, uh, JV, your mic is... Sorry, my, my bad. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> Uh, Churchill Northern Studies Center, also known as Churchill Research Center, is a fuel station established in 1976. Uh, it provides accommodations, meals, equipment, and vehicle rentals for researchers who want to study on a variety of subjects of the Arctic. It also uh, facilitates programs all year long for non-credit learning vacations, volunteer expeditions, uh, university credit courses, and youth programming. So as you can imagine, due to extreme conditions in the Arctic, it's very difficult for humans to station and conduct research uh, long term. So the research center provides an opportunity and accessibility for researchers to study the Arctic species in the subarctic zone. It recently constructed uh, uh, its recently constructed green building is certified LEED Silver acronym uh, for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. The center is financially supported by grants, uh, fees for services, uh, revenues from educational programming and member donations. It launched a rocket grain project in 2018 where uh, they produce hydroponic vegetables and later distribute to the local community at a affordable price. Uh, generally, as a volunteer, we get to go on tundra buggy rides to see the polar bears, <clears throat> town tours, and log sledding in exchange of services we contribute uh, to the center. Whether it's kitchen duty, kitchen duties or housekeeping, there are also like evening uh, lectures almost every day given by the learning vacation instructor, uh, usually a university professor in ecology or environmental studies. Uh, volunteers are more than welcome to join the evening lectures. Volunteers are also free to rent a vehicle if there's one available to explore on our own. 
So here's a little orphan fact on a uh, tundra buggy. So this is a photo of a buggy. It was invented by uh, this Churchill mechanic, uh, Leonard Smith, in 1979 to explore the abandoned military trail because Churchill was a, a military town. The term tundra buggy is a registered trademark um, of Frontiers North Adventures, which is a family owned business specialized in adventures in Churchill and only referred to one specific type of uh, vehicle that is exclusively operated and found in Churchill. Now let's talk about polar bears. Um, I thought I know a lot about wildlife, but um, I still learned quite a bit about polar bears when I was in Churchill. Uh, polar bears are world's largest land predators. Uh, they are excellent swimmers and have a thick layer of body fat and a water repellent coat that insulates them from the cold climate. Uh, they almost exclusively hunt ring seals for their rich fat content to survive in the Arctic. The polar bear population in Churchill is one of the 19 subpopulations in the five state ranges around the, Ar around the Arctic uh, Circle. This subpopulation is forced ashore Hudson Bay when the sea ice is now formed in warmer seasons, uh, which makes Churchill one of the best places to observe polar bears. So when these bears are on land, they basically fast until the sea ice is formed again to forage and hunt. Uh, sea ice is essential for polar bear survival uh, because they use it for traveling, mating, uh, resting, and denning. The single uh, biggest threat to polar bears is climate change. Uh, as the sea ice melts earlier each year due to the rise of temperature in the Arctic, it forces polar bears to move inland earlier. Food shortage uh, drives, drives bears to hunt other species and look for food in human populated areas. Uh, there's also like more and more uh, predatory attacks and humans reported in the winter in the north, exacerbating uh, human, human bear conflict. So hunting on other species could threaten the existence of these species, such as the Arctic fox or the wars. Aside from the new increased threat of being hunted as prey by polar bears, these Arctic animals will have will also have to compete for food resources with their predators. Uh, scavengers like the Arctic fox and the snowy owl depend on big kills from uh, polar bears feeding from the leftover carcasses as source of food. If polar bears are unable to kill uh, seals, another food source for these animals will be cut out. Another sad reality for polar bears is uh, that if they stay on land longer, their uh, body mass and health continue to drop due to lack of food, which makes full gestation of pregnant females uh, very difficult. This in turn affects reproduction rate year by year. Scientists predict that by 2050, polar bear population would decline by 30%, and the subpopulation, particularly in Churchill, would be extinct. Without polar bears to control the seal's population, uh, the number of seals would see subsequently increase, uh, threatening the population of crustaceans and fish in the region, which is an important food source not only for seals, but also for other Arctic wildlife, as well as uh, local human populations. The Northern Study Center facilitates uh, and sponsors education programs and vacations for polar bear conservation. Unfortunately, the center has been financially struggling since its green building construction in 2011 and COVID. But there's a, a lot of ways we can help. Uh, we can sign up for volunteering or we can take a learning vacation because the fees for those services go directly support the center's operations. Or we can simply share the knowledge of the direct link between polar bears and climate change with others. Not to mention uh, Churchill is such a special place. I guarantee you will have like amazing time there. I'm also collecting uh, donations through a GoFundMe uh, campaign, something I usually do after I come back from an eco-volunteer tourism trip, especially if I learn, you know, the organization needs help with funding. I would love to have your support. Uh, among the economy and all the things happening around the world, uh, this may be a big ask to some of you. On the contrary, I believe that now is a critical time to advocate for and preserve our world from the damage we've done. Uh, but don't worry if you can donate, uh, you can still help me uh, spread awareness by sharing the link and this knowledge. Ultimately, to truly achieve polar bear conservation, it will require us, the people, to change the way we live to reduce usage of carbon-based fuels, 
uh, we can start small by carpooling or biking to minimize our carbon footprint and supporting businesses that engage in sustainable practices. Uh, then we can move on to bigger things like upgrading to well-insulated homes, uh, energy-efficient furnaces, and vehicles. Uh, it's only when all of us come together and start the changes at home can we truly make a difference for polar bears and really all species. Most importantly, we need to get involved on the policymaking level and lobby for changes to people's throwaway lifestyle. I know many of uh, you here have kids, uh, as Screencastify, just think about your children and cho your children's children. They're the ones who will suffer the most from the impact of climate change. And do you really want your children, uh, your future generation to not know what a polar bear is? I know I don't, um, that'd be really sad. And here is a link to my uh, GoFundMe campaign and other helpful resources to learn more about the Northern Study Center and polar bear conservation. And I would love to get everybody involved. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. Um, I'll be taking questions if anybody has any questions. Sorry to jump in. I like couldn't find the hand raised thing. Um, this is so awesome, Lou. I think um, I have like a couple questions, but my first one would be just on this last note of like um, your kind of message for everyone to encourage everyone to take on sustainable practices. What are some of the ways like that you like in your home practice sustainability and that you would recommend that we could all take on? So I start from, I start small, like I, um, I, I, I switched all the plastic bags in my home to like, you know, biodegradable bags. And because, you know, the garbage is, it's also like everything is related, right? Like the garbage is we, so I don't know if you know, um, the U S and the Canada, we ship our, basically our recycle, recyclable re recycles, you know, all the plastics to Asia and, in those countries, they don't have the infrastructure to um, to actually properly recycle. So it actually causes more pollution because of microplastics in the air, in the water, and everything. So a lot of places in these in these countries, they burn. They they just burn the, the recycles, and that creates like pollution and you know increased temperature in the air. So like for me, I like for example, um, we can't really change the way right now. At least factory uh, mass produce. Um, you know, package, right? Like for example, like the um the mouthwash that I use. Uh if you buy in a store, it's it comes with these big bottle of like a big plastic, hard plastic bottle. So like I switched that out to just uh there's this uh website called um humannature.com. It like give you these it, you can buy the tablets for mouthwash and it comes with a glass glass container. So it's reusable. You don't have to like Every time you use up a wash uh, a mouthwash, you just go to the store and buy this big big bottle of plastic. So like small things like like that, like switch everything you know in your home plastic bags. Like make sure you use biodegradable and all the containers because packaging we can't really like you know in order to influence and uh, improve on packaging that's gonna take time, right? But so if we start at home ourselves, that's gonna help. Um, and then you know. Uh, de definitely like participate in um like uh uh pledges and everything you know make sure you know your government knows that we don't really need those plastic um we don't need we need we don't need all these like production of new plastic we can like try to recycle and also like um we only recycle the world only recycles about like six percent of the or actually it's nine percent of the the plastic uh all the plastics and i think us recycles only five to six percent of the plastics so um that's something like i personally kind of do at home um and in terms of like uh upgrading to furnaces i know this is like a big it, it would be like a big home project but definitely like uh, start small. Um, and I also use Amazon, right? So you know how like they have like a one day prime delivery um, instead of using that use, I know like everybody, because COVID everybody uses um, online shopping. That's just, it's not going back. But uh, instead of like having like a one day delivery, just like make sure you have all the packages together. So like, it's just one trip, 
um, that'll reduce a lot of carbon footprint of the car or the of the transportation. So, yeah, just small things like that. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Lou, what was your favorite part of the trip? Like the volunteer activities and like that sort of thing? Yeah, um, uh, pretty much everything. Uh, so the volunteer was really intense. Uh, if if anybody's interested, definitely message me. I'll, I'll kind of like uh, catch you up on what the responsibility is and the expectations are. Because during bear season, it's it's so busy. Like there's so many people uh, coming from all over the world to see the polar bears so the center basically serve as like a host right it has like uh, accommodations uh, it provides meals like food and everything so um it's it's like pretty much everything the wildlife um you know the northern lights were just amazing and um i also made some friends you know during volunteers it was like a lot of a lot of hard work a lot of teamwork to make things happen because uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, the center kind of is struggling financially and they are really short staffed. So like they pretty much uh, depend a lot on the volunteers to get the job done. But imagine like 90 guests coming into the center on a day and like we have to kind of cook for these people. We have to make sure that the houses, you know, their rooms are ready. So the volunteers really helped out the staff um, to make sure that the center is like running fun is, is basically functional. So like we keep the, the lights on. And then like we get to kind of go out um, whenever we have a vehicle. That was fun. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of freedom. Um, and then just like kind of like explore, um, you know, when when we're out uh, different things to to discover, because it's just probability. The more we go out, the more we will see like you might. I mean, you never know, like you might see like a wolf, you might see like a, a fox, you just never know because wildlife like move around, right? You have to have to be out there to to see them. And there's also other like other historic aside because it's a military town. It has like a lot of abandoned buildings it used to uh, it used to be used for like military bases. And there's a lot of mirrors and paintings, I think, um, sort of started by this like activist and this artist. Um, that basically have painted uh, all the like all these like beautiful paintings on the buildings and and uh, abandoned buildings and and things like that. Um, so the port um, also in Churchill uh, is is not working anymore, but used to be functional. So just like to discover a lot of um, yeah, it's just also like there's a lot of indigenous people in 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 the town. Um, I think to kind of learn about their culture, um, what they go went through and things like that. It was just very interesting. Like I would say everything, like there's not really like any highlights. I learned so much uh, about the town, its people, wildlife, and, you know, just generally like how we can sort of like um, help right back at home uh, for polar bear conservation. Cause that's polar bear conservation can happen in the Arctic. It has to happen in the other parts of the world. Got some like questions going on. <laughs> I see uh lids, but I, I can't really see. Like I, I just, I guess yeah, lids. You can go. Okay, I have two questions. Um, the first one is like, if you could adopt one of those polar bears and name them, like which name would you choose? That's the first question. So you can you can start with that one. Um, if I can adopt one of the polar bears, and choose a name, um. I don't know. I probably just would like name the polar bear my name. I would just give it. I just give it my name. It'll be like Lou is running around in the Arctic. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I never thought about that. But um, yeah, I wish like they have like a polar bear kind of adoption program. You know, so that's kind of like a a a, a, a way to generate funds as well. But I think the researchers so. Like in the Arctic, it's very, it's kind of hard to study them. Um, they still trying to figure out the basically the lectures we had um, in Churchill is that they um, try to identify each bear by their whiskers. Um, so one of the, yeah, one of the uh, researchers, uh, she's a scientist, she has, she's working on that project right now. So it's kind of hard. Maybe that's why they don't have a adoption program, because in order to adopt an animal, you have to know which animal is, it is. And and she's still working on how to properly identify these polar uh, polar bears by whiskers. So, 
but yeah, <laughs> my name. That would be that would be such a great idea. Um, I'm yeah. actually I I have two elephants that I adopted, but it, yeah, like there's a like a foundation that just gives you updates of how the yeah, elephants absolutely. are going. Yeah, so that could be a great idea for the polar bears. Okay, and the second question is about. I remember that last year you went to Mongolia uh, to also to volunteer in a and how and how what was it like horses wildlife like wild yeah it's horses. Like wild horses yeah yes. Okay, so are you thinking about like next year going to like, do you have already thought of like the next uh, wildlife uh, foundation that you'd like to support next year? I don't know. Yeah, like I just kind of go with the flow. I um I try to find, I usually just Google them and I try to find the species that are really like rare and like kind of like are in danger of being is extinct. Um, So uh, I, I don't know yet, but like I, I was... I'm actually planning to go to Yellowstone just to observe wildlife instead of, I don't know yet, maybe I'll go to India and I don't know, volunteer for animal rescue, but they, they do like rescue in dogs and cats. Uh, so yeah, I just, uh, I would love to kind of find a place that's kind of remote. Like I always find remote places because I live in New York city, right? Like I don't want to go to another city. Um, but yeah, places that kind of like have wildlife that are rare and are vulnerable at least uh, need our protection need our um adv advocacy and you know so that i can come back to to the real world and share that information with the public because i don't think um you know people know too much about like what's going on like i i, I which i understand because there's so much going on in the world like we're just kind of making sure that we're safe and you know warm but um but yeah um I'll let you know though like <laughs> if I find out um uh, but but like to go back to the adoption program um so I will be careful if like there is a polar bear adoption so like it's a sad story um we saw a mom and uh, three cubs so triplets are very rare in polar bears because they usually give like one to two cubs so when we saw the triplets like we're so excited it's like you know very rare uh, but like one of the little, like one of the, uh, the run of the litter actually didn't make it because um, male polar bears can be cannibalist. And they, uh, so it was observed that a male polar bear actually ap uh, approaching and charge it, charge at them and separating them. So like uh, the run of the bear didn't make it. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's just one of the reality of, of nature. Right. Uh, so same thing with the wild wild horses adoption. Like if you adopt a fawn, it might just die like the next year. So um yeah, that's just like a kind of the risk or like the the reality of 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 wildlife in 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 their natural habitat. Well, I hope you enjoy this. Um any other questions? Like I would really love to, yeah, have you um involved or just like share this information with your family and friends, um, and take a look at the the Churchill Northern uh, Study Center and take a vacation there. It's it's very it's it's yeah it's it's so fun. <laughs> they only have like one flight going there, so like you have to go to Winnipeg first and stay overnight and just like uh from Winnipeg to Churchill uh, during the day. Or you can go there by train, but the train is like 50 hours, two days, which is so much. It's too much. <laughs> yeah, but some people like to experience, like, you know, want to have that, have some experience um, on the train to see the scenery and everything. Um, but yeah, there's no car. You can drive there. Um, yeah, there's so much information, but like this, this is like basically... Another thing, like fun thing is that, you know, uh, during bear season, because you can see a bear in town, um, people have generally have their doors, uh, their car doors unlocked, their houses unlocked. So in case like somebody needs to escape quickly from a bear encounter, they can go in. But I mean, people can not really steal cars anyway, because there's no roads to drive out of the, out of the town. So it's kind of fun. Like people just uh, leave their doors open. Such a cool experience. Well, thank you so much, Lou, for telling us yeah. about this trip. And if you want to send me uh, your slide deck, I will make sure to post those links as well as the recording. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Cool. Thanks, Lou. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so Bye. much.